I want to share with you a pretty intense dream I had the other day and how I believe this is a prophetic message from God for his people in the days to come. I put out a video recently explaining that as I am discerning in the spirit and I'm praying and pressing in, I'm believing that what's around the corner for the world is going to be some pretty difficult times. But I also believe that in the midst of those difficult times, this will actually be a unique opportunity for the church to step up, to lead, to thrive, to prosper, even in the midst of chaos, so that many can come and see the goodness of God being expressed and demonstrated through his people. But God will not reward those who partner with the spirit of faith. He will reward those who partner with the sp- But God will not reward those who partner with the spirit of fear. He will, though, reward those who partner with the spirit of faith and choose to not bury the gifts, the talents, the resources, the time that he's allotted to them right now, but choose to invest those, to plant those so that there can be a multiplication when things start to get kind of squirrely in the world around us. This dream that I'm about to share with you, I believe is confirmation for that message that I shared. In this dream that happened recently, I was walking with, the, with my family down this bike path in the middle of the woods. And as we're walking down this bike path, it's me, my wife, and my, my children by my side. There's this overpass, this bridge overpass. And under the bridge is this, this group of homeless people, about five of them. And two of them were full on engaged in a fist fight. And it was a pretty, it was a pretty disturbing scene because it was a really intense fist fight. And as we're walking in the natural, you would imagine, okay, we're going to stop and turn around. I don't want my kids to see what's going on here. I don't want to get close to this action. But it was as, almost as if we were on this conveyor belt and we couldn't stop moving forward through this tunnel. So we're moving forward through this tunnel and my kids are seeing this, this chaotic scene happening, this fight going on. And they're looking at me, they're looking at the fight. They look really concerned and confused, but we're not getting touched by anything happening. We're just kind of going right through it. And my kids are looking at me to see how I'm going to respond to this. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I don't really know what's going on here because we're moving forward. We're not, I can't change direction. We're moving forward. And I'm just trusting that we don't get hit by like a stray, a fist flying through the air or something like that. And we keep on moving forward. We get past this fight and all of a sudden it's like this, this mob of, of homeless people. And I say homeless because they genuinely were homeless, but it, it represented to me like a, a spirit of, of poverty, a spirit of confusion, a spirit of fear, a, a spirit of self-preservation, a spirit of uh, people or the love of many growing cold and people just fending for themselves completely in survival mode. Like if you've ever seen The Walking Dead, it was kind of like this, like they weren't zombies, but the people were kind of acting zombie-like, just totally disheveled and, and they started kind of walking towards us. I'm trying to walk through this tunnel and there's like a light at the end of the tunnel and they're kind of walking towards us and they start intimidating us. They start getting in my face, so like this close to my face and they're starting to like yell at me. I can't, I can't make out what they're saying, but I can, I can tell that they're yelling, they're screaming obscenities, they're trying to intimidate us and get us off track. And my children are just looking to me. They're looking to me and these people aren't trying to like really mess with my children as much, but my children are aware of what's happening and they're looking to me for how I'm going to respond. And I just choose to ignore all of them. And I choose to keep looking forward. And I look forward at like the destination of where we're being drawn towards. And, I, and this thought in me says, don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Just keep moving forward. And then I woke up. And as I was reflecting on this dream, there's a few things that, that really stuck out to me. One of the things that stuck out to me was the chaos. I mean, the, 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 you couldn't ignore the chaos all around us in this dream. And what I sense that what that's a picture of now is of not just what's going to be happening in the physical realm, but what's already taking place in the spiritual realm. Because what we know from scripture is that everything that we see in the natural world is actually a shadow of what's happening of the spiritual, that's ha- spiritual realm, spiritual reality that's happening in the heavenlies. And so as I'm sensing that things are going to be happening, that's shaking out in the physical realm, it's not because I'm really predicting the future as much as I'm saying, 
I sense, I have discernment. I'm, I'm sensing in the spiritual realm, there's a lot of scheming. There's a lot of warfare going on between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. The spirits of the kingdom of darkness and the spirits of the kingdom of God, uh, you know, God's host of angels. There's a lot of activity going on. And we're going to see like as if, you know, the wind, when the wind blows and it like it leaves a, a wake or it leaves uh, uh, debris, that's what we're going to see happen in the natural world, I believe, in the next few weeks and months. I'm just, I'm believing that's going to happen. And I sense what these dreams that God's preparing me personally for this as well. And so that's, because that's a reality, needing to be prepared for that. The second thing that sticks out to me is um, my children. My children are looking to me. My children are at this age where they're so young and they're so innocent. Um, and in 2020, when all of the chaos of 2020 and 2021 were going on, my children didn't really know what was going on. They didn't, they didn't know any different. Um, they, they, they weren't in tune really what was happening culturally. But I feel like my children are, are entering this age where they're going to be a lot more aware of what's happening in the world around them. And I can't hide them from what's going to happen. And I don't even think that's what God's telling me to do. And maybe I hope you hold, are holding on to this word right now. You're listening in. If this is ministering to you and speaking to you, I don't believe God is telling me to try to hide them from what's happening. But I need to remember this, okay? Here's the phrase I want you to hold down. I want you to even write it in the comments as you're watching this video. My countenance is contagious. Your countenance is contagious. If you sense that God is elevating you and calling you to greater levels of leadership and influence for the sake of taking care of his people in this next chapter of church history as we step into what God's doing before he before Jesus returns. It's like when the spies came back from scoping out the promised land, 10 spies came back with a bad report. And when they came back with the bad report, that bad report and fear and intimidation spread throughout the entire camp. Your countenance is going to be contagious. If you go into this next season and, and don't and aren't armored up in the, in the armor of God and you're not armored up in faith and in truth and are empowered by the Holy Spirit, you're going to get caught slipping. The enemy is going to catch you slipping and you're going to have to get ready in a moment when you should have already been ready. I'm preaching to somebody right now. God wants his people right now to be ready so we don't have to get ready when things get more challenging. He wants to prepare you spiritually. He wants to pre prepare your family. He wants to prepare you emotionally. He wants to prepare you financially. He wants his people to be prepared so that we can be established. Not so that we can be knocked over, but so that we can be established because there's going to be people looking at you in your life, your family, friends, especially coworkers if you're a person or an employees if you're an entrepreneur or you run a business. People are going to be looking to you, person who claims faith in Jesus, they're going to be looking to you to see how you respond. And if you respond in fear, you're communicating to everybody else, we don't have a God worthy enough of putting our faith in. Run, be terrified. But if you respond in faith, that faith will be contagious. The third thing, the final thing that God speaks to me through this dream is that phrase that I just shared, to not look to the left or to the right, but to look forward. To not like Peter did when he was stepping out of the boat, walking on water, to not look at the wind and the waves, but to set our eyes on King Jesus. He will lead us. He will provide. He will direct. He will give divine strategies so that we can maneuver through the season that's ahead of us and not just survive in it, but thrive in it. Being trees as if they were planted by riverside, bearing fruit in any season, even in a wintry season when nothing else is bearing fruit, God wants you to bear fruit. God wants you to bear fruit in this next season because if you bear fruit, the world can come to you and taste that fruit and see that Jesus is good. See that the kingdom of God is for real. So I release this word to you right now. I release this dream to you right now. And if you receive it and God's speaking to you, I want you to say, I receive it in the comments right now. I'm gonna pray for you right now and pray for myself. Father, we choose today to reject the spirit of fear we declare it powerless over our lives because you've not given it to us. You haven't given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. The ability to fulfill our calling, power, love, the motivation to do it correctly, and a sound mind to stay the course. We choose today, God, to believe and receive that we are not orphans, but we are adopted, chosen by you, 
set on high places, the head and not the tail, above and not below, seated with Christ in the heavenly realms, given every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. We thank you, God, that this inheritance is ours. We declare today that we, you will find a church that is ready with its lamps filled with oil in Jesus' name. Amen. If you receive it, say, I receive it in the chat or the comments. Share this video, share this story, share this dream so that we can really spread the word of God to as many people as possible. I believe that the best days for the church are really ahead of us. doesn't mean that it won't come without challenge, but it will come with crazy multiplication and fruitfulness. Subscribe for more. See you guys in the next video.